Hey guys, Stephanie here with the Aeroponic Tower Channel and I just thought I would make a quick video to show you how I'm freeing up space in my towers so I can go ahead and plant my peppers. I have lots of pepper plants ready to go here as well as some cabbage and some eggplant and it is time for these to have a home. So I need to make room and I talk about in my plant seeding video and in some of my strategies of growing food this way is that we're constantly turning over food and sometimes that means we're harvesting things before they reach their actual maturity. And let me show you what that looks like. So this is a giant harvest that I harvested so far. This is only five plants. So a massive amount of food. And right here I have, these were either cabbage or cauliflower. I actually think there was a mix up and it's cauliflower plants. And these are not gonna produce a head because I put too many in one pod, even if it was a cabbage, same thing. But I didn't grow these with the intention of letting them mature and turn into a head. I grew them so I could get those healthy beneficial cabbage leaves or cauliflower leaves, same with broccoli leaves. They all hold really high amounts of nutrition um, really fast so that I would have some things for stir fry and for, and for juicing. So I have this giant head of greens, dark leafy greens that we get to add to our dinners this week. They make excellent wraps too if you wanna make garden wraps. I have some beautiful Four Seasons Marvel lettuce here. And I also went ahead and harvested some of my bok choy. This is a little small as well, but I put several seeds in here. Look, it looks like I put four or five seeds in this one. And I wanted it to just grow really fast so that I could get some bok choy. And I knew that I had some seedlings that were gonna be ready soon. So I just wanted to keep the turnover super fast. So I just wanted to share that. You don't have to wait until everything's giant in size. Keep eating off your plants all the time. That's what allows us to avoid the grocery store and get this better than organic food into our diets. Some other things I have in here. I have some more bok choy. I've got some Swiss chard leaves. I thinned out my Swiss chard. I keep them nice and thin. I'll show you guys what that looks like. So right here is my Swiss chard plant and I talked about this in a recent video. You can tell I just keep eating off of it every single day, every other day. So it's getting a little bit thicker stem. And so I mentioned in that video at two months, this comes out completely and I start over. I have another baby Swiss chard ready to go in its spot. And that just allows this plant to feed us without it consuming too many nutrients and being too cumbersome for the tower. The bigger the roots get, the more nutrients they're going to absorb. And that's great because you get these big leaves but at some point it's not going to be worth keeping it in there just waiting for it to grow back these little leaves because we can just start over and younger plants absorb less nutrients and tend to grow a little bit faster than when we're growing these because the more i eat off of this the more it's going to stress it out the more i stress it out the more it's going to want to bolt and go to flower so we are going to take one more of these beautiful green leaves and a red leaf, make sure we have lots of light. I'm gonna take this one as well because I have a Cherville, little tiny Cherville up here that I wanna make sure gets enough light. And now we have another harvest for juicing or for smoothies out of our Swiss chart. Okay, now I've freed up some space in this tower over here. Now I'm gonna take this tower outside since I've freed up some space in it. I've got one more tower I'm gonna harvest from and then I'm just gonna hose them off and give them a little cleaning and add those pepper plants to it. So let me show you guys what that looks like.
can see I am just blasting this with the hose to get off any buildup. Sometimes you'll get some sediment buildup in between the different cage toppers and I like to just blast that off when I can. I turn the water down when I am spraying on any plants and some plants are more fragile than others. So just be mindful that some plants you may need to keep it on really low to clean them. These are a little bit hardier, so I was able to blast them on just a light spray. And then I turn it up to go in between the plants. And it's easy to just maneuver the hose in between the plants to clean off the tower really well on all those little cracks and crevices. If you can't take your tower outside and do what I'm doing, there are a couple of different options. This is the easiest for me just because of where my towers are located. But if you weren't able to easily get it outside where you can hose it off, you can actually take the top and put it in your shower and turn your shower on and let your shower just rinse everything down and use a microfiber cloth to wipe anything off in the crevices that you may feel needs to be cleaned. And another option, if you don't want to take the top off, you can put towels around the base and get a really good spray bottle and just fill it with water and spray everything down with a spray bottle and use a microfiber cloth to wipe down the tower. You don't have to do this very often, but when my towers have been inside for a long period of time, sometimes I like to just give everything a nice good cleaning, remove any dust on plants and just give everything a nice fresh healthy clean start um, as we transition into different seasons as well and that's what I'm doing here just giving everything a nice good cleaning and then we are going to get it back into the garage where I'm going to fill up some of these empty spots. So now I'm going to take my cages and you recycle these. You reuse them. Eventually they break and fall apart, but you can reuse them four or five times. And I'm just going to plop this in here and into, oh, look at that washer. Into the tower it goes. I will need to add a cage to this because as these peppers grow, they're as they fruit, they're going to get heavy and fall over. So I will eventually have a cage on here, but for now it's totally fine. Here is the squash and a pepper is gonna get really big here. So the squash can go that way. This lettuce will be gone and it'll just free up space there. I have a parsley towards the bottom. Should be fine there, but if for some reason the greens, I like to do greens on the bottom because they have a smaller root system. So this has a ledge in each stackable grow cage. So there's a main tube so the water's pumped through the tube to the top shower cap and then it rains down. And then in here, these have ledges because the air, the, because the roots are grown aeroponically, they're in air most of the time. And the roots are gonna wanna go straight down naturally. And the ledge is so the roots will grow around the ledge and not go down because we don't want those roots to grow into our reservoir tank. This is not a traditional hydroponic system with aerated moving water. So anytime there's roots inside your tank, uh, when you're refilling your tank, it's recommended, don't let it get past half full. I tend to not do that, but um, I don't always follow that rule, but that's the optimal rule. And when I fill up my tank, I just reach in there and grab any roots that are growing towards the water and rip them out. It doesn't hurt the plants at all, but you don't wanna grow things like your peppers and your squash and your tomatoes on the very bottom row, even cabbage, because those roots will go down into the tank really fast. If we grow them on the second level or the third or the fourth and so on, then those roots grow around the ledge that's inside there and it keeps them from going down and wanting to grab that water from the tank. So we're just gonna pop these in and I'm gonna have to do a lot more harvesting because I have a ton of peppers and I'm super excited about peppers. I actually want to grow all my peppers for the year for cooking and freeze them from the towers. And then I wanna make sure I have fresh peppers year round as well. So I'm gonna be starting seeds, probably a couple of seeds every single month. So 
so that I always have a pepper plant that's in the right condition. Because what happens, even though a pepper is a perennial plant, meaning it'll continue to grow and grow, when the seasons change, I found that they kind of went into shock. So it came, I had peppers that were in their prime peak at the end of the summer and into the fall. And then they didn't transition well from their prime peak to growing in the winter because they were sort of at the end of that cycle. So I need to time it that some of my peppers are in the maturing phase and reaching their pepper producing fruit peak in the actual winter. And that's just a timing thing. I just need to time when I start some extra seeds. So just know if you, even though a pepper is a perennial plant, it's not going to translate and produce fruit if you're taking it from the different seasons, like from outside in the summer, moving it inside for the winter, you'll wanna make sure you have a pepper in a different stage, like in the young adolescent stage in the fall that will mature into fruiting in the winter if you wanna have peppers in the winter. And I'll make videos of that as we kind of progress into those different seasons. But right now, if you want peppers in the late spring, mid spring, get them started now. I actually have some that I started a couple of months ago, hoping to get some fruit in the early spring that way. And these just pop right in. The peppers, you can grow them pretty close together in the tower. We'll just have to see how they do and if I need to trim things up. And you can always move them. It's not a big deal to move them later. So I'm gonna have to clear out another one, but I in here I have a Bales kale. This is a purple blue kale. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight pepper plants on here. I've got some greens and some fenugreek along the top. There's one squash on this tower. There's some lettuce that I'll harvest soon some uh, baby romaine and I just wanted to have some greens on here so I can manage the pepper plants as they're growing and see what's going to be a good companion plant to go in between these and I might actually move them around there's also a green bean on here a couple of green bean plants um, a parsley and there's another plant back here that I believe is water spinach so lots of different things going on this tower lots of variety of food but the highlight of this tower and my main goal with this tower is amazing harvest of peppers all right and it's probably gonna be hard to see but this is another tower that's been in need of a cleaning for a while so I'm gonna go ahead and take this one outside I'm gonna clean it harvest anything that I feel like needs to be harvested and we will free up more space for peppers I'm dispersing my peppers against many different towers for a couple of reasons because of the way they grow and they're a little bit larger if you can put one or two on a tower it gives you more space if you want to grow a lot of different other things uh, so I'm gonna fit one in here next to some cabbage so I'm gonna take this out now clean it and I'll show you guys what I harvest and one thing you want to do if you're growing squash in the, a closed room in the house or in a garage is make sure you put some sort of airflow on them because squash will like to get powdery mildew so i have this fan that won't get situated here that oscillates back and forth and i have my squash that are set up to hopefully be fruiting early spring because i got them started so early inside and that's another benefit of being able to grow this way we can get a really big head start on a lot of fruiting vegetables all right, so this tank is clean enough and you can take these apart and scrub them and get everything off. There's a little bit of stuff on there, but just blasting them with the hose I found is enough. I grow so much on these that if I just do that every once in a while, they stay clean and really nice. Maybe not perfect, but clean enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this tank some water. It's about three quarters of the way empty. So I will show you guys how simple it is to refill these. I'm not dumping out what's in here. I'm just gonna top it off. Ooh. So I have the advantage of being able to just bring the hose in here. If you didn't have that, you would have to do it with buckets or some other container. And then we have our A solution and our B solution and our little cup. And I've mentioned before, you're supposed to check these after you put the solution in a couple hours later. And I'll do that most of the time. 
I kind of know my towers enough now I can tell and I know my water well enough because everybody's water is a little bit different so your pH may be naturally lower and someone else's may, may be naturally higher I just kind of have the hang of that now so a lot of times I don't even have to test them but when you're getting started until you get comfortable with that definitely test them and this is two cupfuls per 20 gallons and I am at about 15 gallons. So I'm going to do a cup and a half of each. You wanna do them separately. Don't mix these together and then put them in there. Put one in and then the next. I like to do it while the water's being added so that it stirs it up really good. One of the differences with tower garden nutrients versus traditional hydroponics is we don't have to formulate anything here we're going to be tracking the ph but they've done all the formulating so all we have to do is add it and it's going to provide the amount of nutrients that most vegetables need to grow well aeroponically these are great because they're 65 dollars for both of them and they last seven to nine months depending on what you're growing in the time of year so you don't need a lot of solution to grow in here, a lot of fertilizer. This is a lot of plants to produce in seven to nine months with just these nutrients. Uh, they're also easy to stock up on. So they used to be $60 and inflation is a thing everywhere. And I was able to stock up on a lot of them before inflation went up because they don't take much space. So I know I always have you know, a good year supply of nutrients and things I need for my towers, just in case. All right, so now I'm gonna add my plants. I have my cages. And this gives me lots of space to grow, guys. So these are Calrobi. They're gonna be ready in a couple of weeks. So just trying to think through my strategy on where I want to plant some of these things. All right, so I have five pepper plants left that need a home. So let's go ahead and do one, two, I'm kind of alternating them, three, four, put one a little bit higher, five, and then I have some cauliflower. And I definitely want these to thrive. I also have a mini romaine. I'm just gonna pop him in the bottom. These plants are kind of a hot mess. I've been moving them all over the garage and they need to go into the tower. This is cauliflower and there's two seeds. So I'm gonna thin that one. Oh, and I found another pepper. Oh, I actually found two more pepper plants. So let's stick him here with a cauliflower. Yikes, cauliflower up here. Over here. The cauliflower will do fine on the top because they're gonna get big, but they, a cauliflower kind of grows up a little bit. So I'm actually gonna move this green. And this green looks really pathetic because I just sprayed it, but it'll pop right back. So we'll put, matter of fact, I'm gonna do a row of cauliflower along the top and go ahead and move all these greens to the bottom. This is a kale bunch and it will do fine on the bottom without those roots growing into my tank like I mentioned. Put them over here. All right, guys, that's it. I have all my peppers and my cauliflowers in. There's still some seedlings that need time. So I'm gonna clean those up because that tray is a little bit of a mess right now. And let me show you guys my gorgeous harvest. All right, and I have all this food now to take into the house to feed us 
um, as these other plants mature. And I hope this just inspires you to get out there and grow some things aeroponically. If you're interested in an aeroponic tower, there's a link below. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, post any questions in the comments. And this video is more vlog style just to show you guys you know, real life when you have towers. There is cleaning involved, but I also wanna show that it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. We don't have to overthink some of these things. It can be just as simple as harvesting, whatever you feel like eating to make room, to plant new things, blasting a hose at it, filling up a tank, and you're back in business. Growing an abundance of better than organic foods.